Good morning. We are on Ham Common, which is absolutely stunning on a cold and frosty November morning. It is the 5th of November. Tonight is bonfire night. We had a frost overnight. It was minus one when we woke up this morning. So there's the weather report for the uh, 5th of November in Ham. We are currently looking at the pond. Isn't it lovely? Let me just slightly uh, adjust the camera. Welcome to Chatty Walks with Angela. And if we turn the camera, so we are um, to the north of Kingston here, direct sunlight. We're actually maintaining the sunshine this morning. Yeah, hey. Ham Common, I don't know if you can make it out, is surrounded by some beautiful houses. I understand the goldsmiths of the Zach and Jemimas and what have you have a house here. And if we went over there and kept walking, that would take, him up, take us up to Richmond Park. If you remember my Richmond Park walk, I kind of promised we'd do an autumn walk down towards sort of Petersham Ham House. Probably won't quite get the Petersham bit because I want to do something else today. But we are on, I'm calling it Ham Common. Sorry if I'm wrong about that. I wasn't going to start here, but the pond was so beautiful. I thought, why not? Today we are going to walk from Ham across to Ham House and then walk along the Thames. I hope we can see a little, little view of Eel Pie Island and then over Teddington Lock where Monty Python filmed one of their infamous scenes that involved a fish slapping um, somebody in the face. What was it called? The fish slapping dance, of course it was. We're across Teddington Lock, which is the, the um, biggest lock on the non-tidal Thames and the end of the Thames tidal flow. Past the home of the old Teddington Studios. You remember the address if you grew up in this country and you watch kids TV, Teddington Lock, Middlesex. Middlesex, by the way, technically doesn't exist anymore, but has remained as a postal address, even though that too has been abolished. Anyway, and we're gonna go up Teddington High Street, where there used to be trams, there used to be trams on Teddington High Street and trolley buses, which really surprised me that there were trolley buses. And from there, we're going to go uh, end at the National Physical Laboratory, <laughs> which probably sounds quite boring, doesn't it? <laughs> but anyway, let's do another vista of the pond and a great big house. Very, very quiet, she says as the car goes past. You get what I'm saying. Lovely soundscapes. As I said, Richmond Park in the distance over there, if you keep walking. And that is the main Richmond to Kingston Road that you can see the cars on. Let's cross over. It's cute as anything, Ham. Really sweet. If we were just doing our simple sort of walk, which you know we don't do simple walks on this channel, we could head straight down there to Teddington Lock. But we don't want to do that. Let's do a little bit more. Let's walk through here. It used to be that you could only cross the river here with a ferry before they built the bridge. We're going to be crossing the bridge, of course. So we can walk now from Ham to Teddington. They are both suburbs in southwest London and they fall within the London borough of Richmond upon Thames. See my Richmond walk to see what that looks like. I don't know if you can quite see the frost. frost left over in the shady spots. Let's do an autumn tree vista there. I love autumn. Just had Halloween. 
Our sweets for Halloween for the trick-or-treaters ran out in 25 minutes. And we actually had to say no to someone as we pulled in our pumpkins, brought in the sweets, empty sweet box. Luckily, the last one to get a sweetie was a teeny tiny little kid, so we didn't have to let him down. This woman um, is painting. The houses are extremely attractive. Now, I haven't really done a big history of ham. So I can't tell you an awful lot about ham. I do know that the name ham originally referred to bend in the river. go over here. So that's the old bakery. Obviously residential now. Rather sadly this lovely looking pub, Ham Brewery Tap, has gone out of business. So Ham's existence was first recorded around 1150. Now quite a lot of the um, quite a lot of this area, they sort of tended to come under Richmond, Twickenham, or Hampton. So they didn't actually appear in the Doomsday Book or anything like that. And there's a really great name here, Henry V. He acquired the manor of Hammy Oop Kingston in 1415. I love that Hammy H A W M E Oop Kingston. Strange spelling for Kingston, obviously. Up from Kingston, maybe. So this sort of brought Ham into sort of a closer relationship with the royal estate at Richmond. bench house. There's a cricket club here that has been here since 1815. Ham and Petersham Cricket Club. And cricket is still played on Ham Con. I left my phone behind this morning, which means I'm really struggling to find my route through. I did a little scout, but I'm kind of guessing a bit. I had a rough idea in my head where I wanted to go, but I haven't been to Ham in quite a lot of years. My dentist used to be here. Years ago, my dentist used to be here. Now this is actually the way to Ham House. the red brick Stuart mansion that is very well preserved. Sort of gives a good idea of opulent life at that point in our history. I'm gonna cross over to the almshouses, they're very pretty. Very pretty looking almshouses. There's a little plaque that tells us who popped these into existence. Algernon Tolmach almshouses. In memory of her husband, the Honourable Tolmach. Born 1805. Don't like to sort of push too much at the plaque and disturb anyone. We're heading along here. This is Ham Street. 
little view in that direction. Temporarily residing here at the moment are the Riding for the Disabled stables. I don't know if anyone saw the coverage. It's a lot of coverage on BBC News about the stables for Riding for the Disabled in Teddington that got moved out of their accommodation. They were trying to crowdfund for the premises. And I think they're temporarily in this area at the moment. Ooh, I see a blue plaque. Um, card am I seeing a cardinal name? Cardinal Newman in that rather large house. See a plane in the distance headed towards Heathrow. You will have spotted that when you film in this area, there's a lot of planes in the sky. If you just look up there, it's one of our little brown National Trust plaques. Signs, I mean, telling us this is the way to Ham House and garden. Point you in that direction. So we're sort of coming towards the Petersham end now and there's Petersham nurseries and stuff in that direction. Not going to include it on this walk as I kind of want to do Teddington Lock Ham House side. I think I'm going to cross. Oh, red bus. Okay, this is Beaufort House. I bet there was a duke or something of Beaufort. I'll take that as a guess. The manor house. So this was a posh end of town, um, <laughs> as you can probably tell. And a lot of this area, and um, maybe it's another plane coming into land. A lot of this area benefited from its proximity to Richmond, Hampton Court, places like that. Basically because gentry was nearby, so more gentry wanted to come through too. So the 17th and 18th centuries, there's a lot of growth around here. Huge vapour trails up there this morning. I'm led to believe that means something for the atmosphere. I do not know what. So about a week ago we probably would have seen more leaves on the trees but we've had some storms as I mentioned in my Halloween video and obviously we've had a few, I don't know about frosts is the right word we did have a frost overnight last night, as I said, minus one this morning. I'll pop a picture probably on the community tab of the view from my attic. So we've got a lot more leaves down than would have been if I'd done this walk last week. But time and everything, guys and gals, time. So shady side of the street here. Oh, is that an old citron? I'm a sucker from an old, for an old citron. The Citroen DS from the 1960s, one of my favourite cars ever. Now this is, I thought so, a CX. We used to own a CX. It broke, so it was really old in the end. 
this one's still functioning. It's got, you know, those sort of hydraulic sort of um, that suspension system. <laughs> when you turn the car on, it goes up and down. So the orangery. Now, was that perhaps an old orangery? I don't know. I've got a feeling we're in the area of Ham House now. I'm going to walk along here and then take a little, well I assume it's a left or maybe it's straight ahead of me. You're a highly qualified tour guide here. I don't know where I am, no idea. I've been here before. Ooh, I have to thank Sandra for this walk. So, hey Sandra, friend of ours and um, massive supporter of the channel, bless you. Oh, the Palm Centre, selling beautiful plants for over 30 years. And just as I said, along here, further through that direction, we have Petersham Nurseries as well. So thank you, Sandra, for recommending this walk. It's a great idea. They are obviously, um, well, not obviously, you wouldn't know. Uh, they regularly come here for walks on the weekend. The family walk together. I'm going to cut through this grass, get some soaking wet feet, why not? Let's have a look at this sign. Ham House and Gardens. You can tell, no idea where I'm going. Clueless as usual. I see we have... Ham House Garden, Ham House and Garden, Richmond Bridge, car coming, Twickenham via Foot Ferry as well. So half a mile it says to Ham House and Garden. Let's head off. We're not going to go in because it's National Trust and anyway you kind of need permissions to film in those sorts of areas. I wonder if this is the back end of Petersham Nurseries. I see olive trees. Oops. Falls down a hole as usual. I'm going to cross here. Big wall, so which is why I'm thinking maybe back at Petersham Nurseries. Hope this is interesting enough for you. <laughs> so I just show you a road and a wall, some horse poo on the road. As I said, the stables have relocated here while they're trying to raise money. Bless them. Big fan of riding for the disabled. The lad used to um, used to do riding for the disabled for quite a few years. His horse was the naughtiest horse in the place. Charlie, we used to call him Charlie the Naughty Horse. He was a lovely horse, really. Great relationship with the lad, but prone to be a little stubborn and naughty. We hear he's um, retired now. So here we go, more wall and road. I have never explored this end of town. Oh, what do we have here? Something. Any um, more knowledgeable tour guides? <laughs> please, please tell us what it is. Put it in comments, you know the rules. I see quite a trail of people through, through here. We must be getting close.
Park. We're not far from Bushy Park here once we get over the other side. That was all kind of part of the whole... Oh wow, is that it? Just see it in the distance over there. The, the tree-lined avenue made me think of Bushy Park, but I realise we have arrived at Ham House. Yep, in case there's an idiot like me going around, there it is, the Ham Estate. <laughs> so, <laughs> you can walk your dog here. As I said, we're not going in. National Trust, Ham House Meadow. So that looks publicly available to me. Tripped again. Tell you what, I'm going to zip up there. Show you the front. Hold on a sec. So we are at Ham House, which is the first stopping off point on this walk. We're not going in, um, but famously lavish, sumptuous, beautifully put together. And um, yeah, let's go see. Ham House and Garden National Trust. Um, let's have a look. Non-member prices if you want to go in. Adult £13, child £6.50. Uh, family £32.50, family one adult £19.50. So there you go. They've got guided tours and they've got an ancienty mappy styly thingy showing you where we are. Welcome to Ham House and Gardens. Please enter here. So mainly developed by um, the Earl of Dysart, who was, get this, Charles I's whipping boy. See, I didn't really know that that was actually a thing, but it, apparently it really was. There's a reason why we have an expression whipping boy. So he was educated with Charles, Prince, the young Prince Charles, son of James I of England and I think Ireland at the time. So he couldn't go beating the prince, so if the prince was naughty, didn't do his homework, uh, it was this chap, William, who had to take the punishment for him. Unfortunate. So Charles gave his childhood friend a lease on Ham House. Just do it from this distance, the sun is in such a position that you might not even be able to see it that well, kind of looming from the mist. That's where we were just walking. As I said, stunning November day. Beautiful. And we're going to the Thames now. Unfortunately for Murray, civil war broke out. And just as he'd done these massive renovations, beautiful interiors, furniture, civil war broke out, spent the left of, rest of his life fighting on the King's behalf and trying to raise money for the royalist cause. Luckily, he had a very um, determined daughter, shall we say, as I realise there's water here. <laughs> I had to get across. Anyway, his very determined daughter, Elizabeth, saved Ham House. So she sort of stayed in touch with the Oliver Cromwell bunch, and at the same time sending secret messages to the exiled Charles II. How are we gonna cross here? Let me have a look. Has this ever happened to you? You get somewhere and it's like, oh, I can't go any further. There's a load of water. So um, in true professional style, you're going to have to go around the other way. <laughs> Sorry. Anyway, look, water. I haven't got my welly boots on. <laughs> so it was Elizabeth uh, who married and... Um, wealthy John Maitland, Duke of Lauderdale. Sorry, might as well take another look at the house in the distance. Ta-da. And together they made Ham House one of the most beautiful and luxuriously furnished houses in England, collecting exotic furniture, bringing in craftsmen. 
to transform the house into the showpiece home we see today that is little changed. So it's been well maintained to give you a very good idea of what opulence life would have been like at the time. Okay, so we're on the, <laughs> quite made it to the river yet, nearly at the river. I have high hopes that we'll get a view of Eel Pie Island. Eel Pie Island, you say? What is Eel Pie Island? Anyone want to pop that in comments? I only have the very briefest of ideas as to what is Eel Pie Island. But it's an artist studio, in effect. Well, not one. There's a number of them. Old Bohemian living island. Now, hopefully we can get through to it through here. As I said, highly professional tour guide here. Mm. I don't know if I ever told you I used to be a tour guide for a company called EF. I used to take American school parties around Russia. Because I can speak Russian and all. It was pretty cool. I used to enjoy it. Eagles and aeroplanes. The same soundscape. No, last view in that direction. Here we are, we are at the Thames, woohoo! And it looks like there's a ferry to Twickenham, I think it's the foot, foot passenger ferry to Twickenham here. Oh, I see some, hmm, trying to name that breed of dog over there. We played dog bingo at Christmas. Pretty good for learning dog breeds. Don't think I'd realise it was quite such a flight path here. The whole time I've been filming, just been flights coming in to land the whole time. Here we are, we're at the Thames. Isn't it lovely? Ooh, lovely. Okay, so looking in that direction, Richmond and Twickenham. Do you see my Richmond walk, as I mentioned earlier? Speed limit eight knots. And if you want to fish, you have to have an environment agency rod license. A friend of mine does um, cycle and fish along here. Howard, I'm talking about you. You can see a pub over there called the White Swan. See somebody painting, second painter of the day. Morning. Lovely view. Lovely bit of painting as well. So 
also very lovely here, very popular. As you can see, lots of people dog walking, health walking, painting, all those sorts of things, fishing. We're actually heading, we're going to see Eel Pie Island in a sec, and then we'll go to Teddington Lock. Teddington Lock, Middlesex. So as I said, over here we have some lovely looking homes on the river. And this kind of mud flat actually that we're looking at now is Eel Pie Island. It has. We'll no doubt be seeing some evidence of that fairly soon. 26 artists' studios. And they can only be reached by footbridge. Some cyclists here dinging. It's a bit narrow for sort of, you know, loads of people. So we'll see the footbridge, which sort of arches over the Thames, and technically it's sort of private property over there. But twice a year, the Islanders, I love the fact, artist studios, and we call them Islanders, like you're in the Hebrides or something. Um, you are allowed, uh, as a member of the public, twice a year to come and nose around the open studios. I think the next one is in December, I'm not sure. There we are. I have to say, how do I put this nicely? That is not a rock and roll view. So the story of Eel Pie Island, it was once a bubbling cauldron of British rock and roll. There was a five month period in 1963 where you could see the Rolling Stones play there every Wednesday. Also the Who, Pink Floyd, and Screaming Lord Such all did, did gigs at the Eel Pie Island Hotel. They say it was a rickety 19th century ballroom that burnt down in 1971. So the island itself, Eel Pie Island, was a place for counter-culturalists, poets, and what would have been called a hippie commune in the 1960s. Now today you get your painters, potters and sculptors. There we are. In studios built around an old boatyard which perchance is coming up through the trees there. It's described as a strange overgrown hamlet. It says the path to the studios is scattered with undressed mannequin torsos, thick curls of boating rope, rusty hulls, and plants wearing top hats. There you go. I can see a for sale sign over there. I can see a something sold. I think it says sold actually. 
Yep, sold. Here we are, better view now through the trees. It doesn't really look that um, countercultural, I must say. There we go. So look over there. And that's your place. And then we sort of rejoin the main Thames as we come along here to head towards Teddington Lock. The largest lock on the non-tidal part of the Thames. So the tidal part of the Thames did actually last all the way through till Staines at one point. But by the 19th century, this part of the Thames was about the furthest that the tidal flow would go. So yes, there was a ferry at a certain point in time in history. There used to be a weir. Some nice houses over there. There used to be a weir, so so before they sort of put in the locks. Um, I think sort of around the 14th century, they had a weir, which is like a dam across the river, and then you would sort of remove a part of it for boats to go up and down stream to release the water. I think they were called flash weirs or something like that. But it was quite dangerous because you kind of had to either ride the head of water or kind of fight against the water if you were going in the other direction. So that wasn't a terribly practical way of managing water flows. So they originally built, uh, I think a wooden lock, but it kind of became quite dilapidated. So they built a proper, proper one that has occasionally been destroyed by flooding. They kind of estimate that there's big floods around here approximately every 50 years. Of course, that might change. Um, so there's been some rebuilding over time. But there is a massive great big part of the lock that hopefully we'll see when we get there. It's amazing, you can hear those planes all the time. It's because they're quite low in the sky here, so they make their final approach to Heathrow. Anyhow, view of places. I'm going to 
putting some really odd red flashing screens on my Osmo Pocket. So I'm going to see if I can check out what's going on. And I think I'll end the walk for now. And it may be I come back for a part two. See you later or next time. Bye bye.